the one making all the You were the like, blooper? I was the blooper, so. <laughs> you were the blooper. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us again. My name is Killian, and I focus on building Microsoft 365 AI applications. And today we're joined by Paul from the Microsoft Windows AI platform team. And he's going to talk to us more about Windows machine learning and specifically about device selection when using the WinML APIs. So thank you so much for joining us today, Paul. Thank you for having me. And I think I left out another person who's a person, another wonderful guest who's joining us today who actually finds people, and that's Rufus over here. And you can see he's actually working in action. His little LiDAR radar is spinning around. And so we're actually going to incorporate him in this talk today. Rufus! <laughs> Go Rufus! So before we get started, let's actually talk about Windows Machine Learning. And Paul, can you explain what value does Windows ML give to using our Windows 10 hardware? Absolutely. Um, one of the largest things actually Windows ML does is it gives you hardware acceleration. And so you're able to take your machine learning model and you can run it um, as fast as you possibly can. So we have a bunch of stuff on the CPU that acts very, very fast. And then we have a bunch of stuff on GPUs that will run uh, very, very fast. And we kind of help manage that for you. OK, wonderful. So would you say that Windows machine learning is hardware agnostic? And if so, how is that realized? Yes. Um, I would say it is hardware agnostic, great word. Um, pick on those GPU parts, and so basically each GPU can come from a different manufacturer and have a different set of drivers. At the Windows ML layer, you don't have to worry about it. So you can basically say, I want to use DirectX, which we will show you in a second, because we use that DirectX layer to be able to do that hardware abstraction, and then it doesn't matter kind of which GPU you have. It just works? It just works. Amazing. <laughs> So let's actually jump into seeing the options available when choosing our devices with WinML. Love it. So let's jump into the documentation. And there it is. And so this is just the standard documentation that's up on docs.microsoft.com, link at the end of the video. And you can see I'm at the learning model device. And so on the right, you know, you go on the right, you always have your fancy uh, navigators. So we'll go down to the constructor, which you can see up there at the top. And the destruct constructor takes an enum called the learning model device kind. And we'll jump over to the learning model device kind where you can see all of your choices. And so the first choice is pretty clear. You can run it on the CPU. Okay. Um, the second choice is this default choice that we have, uh, which it actually will also run it on the CPU. And so we wanted to kind of just make a nice default that if you don't pass anything, we've got a place that'll run it that just works. Okay. The third one is exciting. That's our direct X. And I noticed that there's also two other DirectX options. There's a high performance option and there's a min power option. Can you explain the difference between these as well as how they relate to the plain DirectX non specified option? Yes, great question. And so the non specified plain option uh, basically just tells the system DirectX choose uh, kind of an appropriate one. Um, and the DirectX system actually has some really nice policy to figure out what an appropriate one would mean and kind of do neat things like that when you have multiple GPUs which you have multiple GPUs. So you can see Killian here is running one of the Surface Book machines. Yay! <laughs> this Surface Book has a performance base. Fancy word, it means it has a powerful GPU sitting right here in the base. And so now switching back to our docs, magic. Um, these are hints. And so these two bottom hints for the high performance and min power kind of let the app hint to the operating system what's your workload. So if you have a workload where you really need it to run as fast as possible, you can tell us and we'll make sure to always run it on the fastest GPU available. If you're, eh, I'm okay, just run it, uh, but I really want to save the battery life that's sitting there on this laptop, then you can give us that hint as well, which is the min power. Thank you for those explanations. It really gives us the difference of why we would use which option and when. But we've left out a, a key component of our talk today, a, a key contributor who's been sitting, us, sitting in front of us the whole time. And I think he's staring at us, and he actually wants us to do something. He hasn't been swiveling toward either of us recently, partially because we haven't been moving. But I think he really wants us to jump into his code. So why don't we go ahead and look at the WinML code that is powering Rufus. Absolutely. To the code. To the code. Almost. The code. There we go, the code. And so this is Rufus's code. Actually, it's up on GitHub. Um, you can go play around with it and see it. And the line that we're highlighting there is where Rufus creates the learning model device. 
So this is how easy it is to actually specify the device in the code, in the C++ code that's running on the robot operating system. Yes. So Paul, I noticed here that Rufus is actually using the GPU. So why isn't Rufus using the DirectX functionality that we talked about before? In Rufus's case, um, you can see it's kind of a custom hardware build. So we built the robot, and we knew exactly what hardware was on there. And we knew that the model that we were using, which was the YOLO model, we showed the in the last model. video. <laughs> Correct. And so Rufus just knew that the CPU was the right device for it to use. Um, and so that's how you do it, actually. When you don't want to um, you know, use that flexibility or have that other hardware piece, you can specify CPU. Wonderful. Well, now if you loved what you saw here and you want to learn more about the Windows Machine Learning documentation, Paul and I recommend you head over to aka.ms slash overview of 1ML to learn more about how to select your devices on Windows Machine Learning and learn other things available in the docs. So thank you so much for joining me today, Paul. Thank you, Kelly. And Rufus, if you could. Thank you, Kelly. Thanks, <laughs> Kelly. <talking. laughs> if, he, he, if he could say thank you, if he could. I, he's probably a polite robot. We don't know, though. He doesn't swivel all the time. So. <laughs> we'll see you next time to learn more about Windows Machine Learning. Thanks. Thank you.